we were taking few questions and answers on JSP. Let us continue with it. Next question is, what is the JSP use bean standard action? So this JSP use bean standard action, this is used or employed to locate an existing Java bean or to create a Java bean if it is not there or if it does not exist. It has attributes to identify the object instance, to specify the lifetime of the bean, and also to specify the fully qualified class path as well as the type. Next is what are the scopes available in JSP use bean? So the scopes, first is page scope. So this page scope specify the object uh, will be available for the entire JSP page but not outside the page. Request scope means this specifies that the object will be associated with a particular request and exist as long as the request exists. Application scope, so page scope, request, request scope, now the application scope. So this application scope specifies that the object will be available throughout the entire web application, but not outside the application. Entire web application, throughout entire web application, not outside the application. And this session, this specifies the object will be available throughout the session with a particular client. Next is, what is JSP forward standard action? So this JSP forward standard, it action forwards a response from a servlet on a JSP page to, to some other page. This also, this also, to certain other page. So the execution of the current page is then stopped and control is transferred to the forwarded page. The syntax would be something like this. JSP forward page and then this will be the target page it means another page we are talking about. In this case the target page can be a JSP page, it can be an HTML page or a servlet within the same context. So if anything is written to the output stream that is not buffered before this JSP forward, an illegal state exception will be thrown. And you have to note that whenever uh, we intend to use this JSP forward and JSP include in a page. Buffering should be enabled because by default, buffer is, you know, it is not enabled. So let us say not enabled. We have to enable it. What is the JSP include standard action? This JSP include standard action, this enables the current JSP page to include a static or a dynamic resource at a runtime, right front. Uh, in contrast to the include directive, the include action is used for resources that would change frequently, and the resource to be included must be in the same context. And the syntax of this JSP include standard action would be something like this: JSP include page. This would be your page, and you say flush true. So the target page is the page to be included in the current. Yes. What is the difference between include directive and include action? See, this include directive, it includes the content of the specified file during the translation phase when the page is converted to a servlet and the include action, include directive and include action. So this includes the response generated by the by executing the specified page. It may be a JSP page or a servlet. During the request processing phase, when the page is requested by a user. The include, the second difference uh, we will talk about is the second or the include directive is used to statically insert the contents of the resource in the current JSP and uh, in include action, the include standard action enable the current JSP page to include a static or a dynamic resource at runtime. Include directive Use the include directive if the file changes rarely. Uh, this is the fastest mechanism. And use this include action only for content that changes often and if uh, which page include cannot be decided until the main page is requested. Now the question may come differentiate between page context dot include and JSP include. 
So this JSP input standard action and the page context or input method, these are both used to include resources at runtime. However, this page context or input method, this always flushes the output of the current page before including other components. While the JSP include flushes the output of the current page only if the value of flush is explicitly set to true like this. Flush true, then only it will flush. What is the JSP set property action? So we use this JSP set property to give values to the properties of beams that have been referenced earlier. So you can do this in two contexts. First, you can use this JSP set property after, but outside of this JSP bean element, as like this, you have JSP use bean ID name, and then JSP set property name, like this my name property will be some my property. So in this case, the JSP set property is executed regardless of whether a new bean was instantiated or an existing bean was formed. The second context in which this JSP set property can appear inside the body of a JSP use bin element is like this. JSP use bin ID will be my name, and this is how we use. Uh, in this case, the JSP set property is executed only if a new object was instantiation, not if the existing one was formed. What is the JSP get property action? This JSP get property action is used to access the properties of a bean that was set during the JSP get property action. Set and get. So the container converts the property to a string as like this if it is an object. It uses the to string method to convert it to a string. It is a primitive say that it converts it directly to a string using the value of method of the corresponding wrapper class. The syntax of this JSP get property method is JSP get property name like this, property like this. Uh, in this case, the name is the ID of the bean from which the property was set, and the property attribute is the property to get. So, user must create a, or locate a bean using the JSP use bean action before using the JSP get property action. What is the JSP param or parameter type standard action? So, this JSP param standard. This action is used to or used with JSP include or say uh, JSP forward to pass parameter names and value to the target resource. And the syntax of this JSP param standard action is like this. JSP param name is param or param name and value will be param value. What is the JSP plugin action? So this action uh, lets us or you insert the browser specific object or embed element needed to specify that the browser run an applet using the Java plugin. What are scripting elements? See, the JSP scripting element will let you insert Java code into the server that will be generated from the current, current JSP page. So they, there are three forms actually. First is the expression of the form like this. We have angle bracket percent is equal to expression percent the end that are evaluated and inserted into the output. Then you have a scriptless. The scriptlets of the form angle bracket percent code and angle this percent angle bracket. So that are inserted in the, into the servlet service method. Then you have declarations of the form like this. You have exclamation mark. So these are uh, that are inserted into the body of the servlet class outside of any existing methods. What is scriptlet? Scriptlet. This scriptlet contains the Java code that is executed every time a JSP is invoked. So when a JSP is translated to a servlet, the scriptlet code goes into the service method. Uh, as these methods and the variables written in scriptlets are local to the service method. They are local. So a scriptlet is written between this angle bracket person and these tags person angle bracket end and is executed by the container at request processing time. What are JSP declarations? As the name is uh, suggesting, JSP declarations are used to declare class variables and methods in a JSP page. So they are initialized when the J class is initiated or initialized. Anything defined in a method is available for 
the whole GSP page, complete GSP page. A declaration box is enclosed between these tags, as you see here in bold, and the declaration is not included in the service method. The JSP is translated to a servant. What is JSP expression? A JSP expression is used to write an output without using the out dot print statement. So it can be said as a shorthand representation for say scriptlets. So an expression is written between these tags is equal to and it is not required to add the expression with a semicolon as it implicitly adds a semicolon to all the expression within the expression tags. How is scripting disabled? Scripting is disabled when we set the scripting invalid element of the deployment descriptor to true. So it is a sub element of JSP property group. Its valid values are true and false. And what, what will be the syntax? JSP property group, then you are pattern, say some star of JSP. Scripting invalid, and then you make it true, scripting invalid, and end it with the JSP property group. What is difference or what is the difference between custom JSP tags and beans? See, the custom JSP tag is a tag you define. Now, you define how a tag, its attributes and the body are interpreted and then group your tags into collection called the tag libraries that can be used in any number of or number of JSP files. So, custom tags and beans accomplish the same goal, same task encapsulating complex behavior into simple and accessible form. So, but differences are also there. Custom tags can manipulate JSP content, beans cannot. Because complex operations can be reduced to a significantly simpler form with uh, custom tags than with beans. And custom tags require a, quite a bit of work to set up than to beans. And custom tags usually define relatively self-contained behavior, whereas beans are often defined in one servlet and used in different servlet or JSP page. Custom tags are available only in JSP 1.1 later, but beans can be used in all JSP versions. So these were a few more questions on JSP. Hope you have benefited by it. Thank you so much. All the best.